Let's record. Um, so on behalf of the gallery committee of the Cosmopolitan Club, I would like to welcome everyone to our inaugural Meet the Artist virtual exhibit. Today we're featuring two artists during the hour, Nina Greer and Nancy Hirsch. Nina and Nancy, please just greet the group so they know who you are because I'm gonna be showing a PowerPoint. So Nina, if you can wave, that would be great. So people know who, what you look like and Nancy, uh, wave to the group, that'd be great, thank you. Uh, so I'd like to start by covering a few housekeeping uh, items. So first of all, as you know, I've, unmu I've muted everyone except for Mary Kirsten, who is the chair of our committee, um, Susan Hayner, who's a member of our committee who will uh, be our moderator and introduce our artists today, as well as our two artists themselves. So if there's any need for any of you to speak at any point, please remember I have muted you, you can unmute yourself. Um, the virtual exhibit today will be split into two 30-minute sessions. In each session, our moderator, Susan Hayner, will briefly introduce each artist. And following the introduction, each artist will present her work um, uh, with the assistance of a PowerPoint that I will run for the artist, uh, followed by questions. Um, these PowerPoint presentation presentations will help to showcase their work, and I'm going to assist by um, actually showing the presentations via my screen. And Nina and Nancy, you can just indicate to me when you want me to advance to the next slide. Mary Kirsten will be the timekeeper so that we can make sure that we have an equal amount of time for both artists. So Mary will interrupt if we are going over time. Uh, please, um, yes, may I ahead. just add, if you have any questions or comments, please use the chat function. Right. So um, exactly right, please submit your questions via chat and then at the end of each one of the artist sessions, we will choose as many questions as we have time for. So uh, with that said, I'm now going to share my screen. Um, and our first artist today is uh, Nina Greer. And um, let's see. I'm going to start a slideshow, so just be patient. Susan Hayner, you can uh, yes. give us a little. <laughs> yes, I, I'm, I'm so happy to introduce Nina. Um, I'm amazed that after working for 20 years in corporate healthcare, she made a revolutionary change. She now makes jewelry, apparel, prints, upholstered fabrics, um, and all sorts of other things. They seem desperate, disparate, but in fact, you have an underlying philosophy. And this relates to the historical roots of your family. Can you talk to us about that? And can you show us your work? Yes, thank you so very much, Susan, for that nice introduction. And thanks to the Cosmopolitan Club for inviting me to participate in this virtual gallery. Um, yes, to give you a, a brief background, I, um, as mentioned, I come from the corporate side. I spent 20 plus years in corporate America. And I just, it arrived to me and, and like, 2014, maybe I should do something different. And that resonated more with my core. And that really was influenced by my parents who were um, in one way or the other, very conscientious about history and culture. Um, specifically, I had a brother, a brother uncle, my, my mother's brother, who was part of SNCC, a student for nonviolent um, change. And um, so that kind of motivated me. So uh, we can get into the presentation, um, just to give you a little bit more about why I decided to, how I came up with historical dream, was I wanted to take history and fashion and design uh, from an art artisan's perspective and bring it together such that, you know, we'll, we're reminded of sung and unsung heroes in an iconic visual way. If you can advance the slides, I can 
give you. So I make a, uh, a, I have a portfolio of jewelry and apparel and some upholstered items. Here is just an example of when I was making a pair of cufflinks. It might have been Jim Thorpe, you know, the all American, Native American, or it could have been Frederick Douglass. But I pretty much design the jewelry and I make it. Can you please advance? So when I talk about sung and unsung heroes, I think uh, many of us already know about um, Harriet Tubman. You know, she was Aramita, it was her slave given name, but then she married a Tubman and changed her first name to um, what her mother's name was. So I'm thinking in this, in this image here that you have um, precious pearls. What better way to bring up Miss Harriet and um, just pay homage to her in a very high end or, or, or very casual way. But these pearls are hand strung that I strung. These, the the uh, brooch is designed by me and made by me. This is sterling silver with a four strung um, pearl necklace. Um, all of my items are on historicaldream.com, my website. But I think when you're getting all gussied up, you can just bring a little bit of history to your outfit. Can you advance the slides? Here, um, again, I'm looking for ways of making sure we are memorializing our historic icons. And this, I thought, was a little more earthy with mahogany beads with 14 karat gold vermeil um, beading. Um, the, and the medallion is, is brass, but I like to give it a 14 karat gold vermeil coating. So this gives you a little bit more funky and casual, a little pop. If we can advance. So I am actually wearing this necklace now. This was a, I, I, this is a sterling silver medallion of Miss Harriet. And I just so that you know, I use the um, icons from these images there in the public domain. Um, some things I design and some things I just pull off from the public domain. But I always have a um, a, um, a a what do you call it the um, the leaf around the medallion as a way of saying kumbaya. Um, so it's an olive branch. And uh, this is, has a soft, more white silver coating, um, but it's sterling silver. Um, next slide, please. This is another one of Miss um, Harriet. I do, in fact, I call her Miss Harriet because I have such respect for her. I mean, making like, you know, 17 trips to, you know, go back to the slave quarters and get her friends and family, you know, I, I really respect all that she went through and she was never caught. Um, so this is your sterling silver medallion um, with the um, little tassels on it that are sterling silver. I can actually customize this to put pearls as the tassel um, as well. Um, next slide. So someone asked me to do a pair of cufflinks with Miss Harriet. So this is a sterling silver pair of cufflinks. So I can do this in sterling silver. I can do this in 14 karat gold, or I can do this in brass. So the, the metal is very changeable. Um, I take orders and then I will ask what metal you want this um, item to be. So next slide. slide. Then I decided to be a little crafty. This is Miss um, Phyllis Wheatley. Um, many of you may know her as the 18th century poet and author. She's also being recognized and, um, and um, regarded well in the American Revolutionary Museum. It's currently, you know, well, it was open until COVID, but she is memorialized there too. But this is another example of a woman who was a slave, who was, who was um, her name was given to her by the, her, um, the Wheatleys. And Phyllis comes from the slave, name of the flame, slave ship that she was brought into the country on. But they taught her how to read, write, and Latin, English, and Greek. And she became a prolific poet and um, an author. And it was just astounding to many people of that era um, of the 18th century to think that a slave could be educated and be so talented. So here is a nice casual fun piece. I call it the geometric piece because I'm working with sterling silver, the medallion, as well as a nice uh, geometric circle. With a, with a little bit of sterling, of um, gold um, wrapped around each one, each piece. Next slide. I hand forged this sterling silver uh, choker necklace, another um, uh, piece to pay homage to Ms. Phyllis Wheatley. And I would do this um, based on orders that are given to me. So if you want one, then I take it. So it's a custom order. Next slide. 
Um, here are some, what I did with this is earrings. These are popular. Many people have bought these. Educators, particularly, um, I oxidized them so they don't have to be oxidized. So that's an, a question I would ask of you. But this is another way of you know regaling Miss Phyllis Wheatley with um, sterling silver earrings that are oxidized or not. Next slide. And here's a ring. I, I do have a ring that's sterling silver as well as the gold one that I'm wearing now. So it's, I had it in rose gold and 14 karat gold, yellow gold, and white gold or sterling silver. And this, I, I, this was a, I was motivated by the shape because I was thinking of an old Spanish coin. The whole idea is like, you find this relic in, you know, somewhere and, you, and, you know, you brush it off and you just see the, the beauty of it. And that was my motivation for um, this, the style of this ring. Next slide. Miss Madam C.J. Walker, um, she was born in she was um, born in New Orleans, and she was um, uh, the first American a millionaire woman around the country. And she was very much an activist. This is another way where I'm saying if you're getting gussied up, you just you know I made this four strand pearl necklace um, with a nice uh, clip brooch of Madam C.J. Walker. Now this image is something that I designed. So this is not from, as you can tell, not from a, um, a picture that is in public domain. She was known for her plumes. You know, she wore these hats with these big feathers. So that's, if you look really closely, um, I have a plume coming out of her hair. Uh, and these are made to order. Next slide. And this is a Mary, Madam C.J. Walker with the sterling silver um, chain. And um, this is a brass medallion that I dipped in 14 karat gold for a man. And um, so I, it's, it's a little more casual. Next slide. So then we have Mr. Frederick Douglass. You know, he was one of the most, um, he, he did more photographic sessions than Lincoln, Abraham Lincoln. So he understand the power of imagery and the power of Ike icon, being an icon. And so this is just a simple necklace, sterling silver of Frederick Douglass. And I, I work on reliefs typically is what I like when I'm designing the actual molds for any of these medallions. Next slide. So we have uh, many gentlemen have actually ordered the Frederick Douglass sterling silver um, cufflings. I've um, had them in sterling silver as well as gold, as well as brass. So uh, this is easy to order. Next slide. So um, one of the points about um, historical dream is, dream is that we're looking to pay homage to uh, many sung and unsung sung heroes across the cultural spectrum. And this is one example of that with Jim Thorpe. There was a, uh, you know, these are cufflings that I, I did pull off the, the image that are in a public domain of um, Mr. Thorpe. And I just loved his, I love that picture, the uh, picture of an athlete. So these are sterling silver as well. Cufflinks that you can order. We gotta make sure we give tribute to our all American um, Mr. Thorpe, a Native American, the, the first Native American, all American um, Olympic medalist. Next slide. So um, many of you may have seen this statue outside of um, City Hall, I believe is on the east side of the city, of the, um, of the building. This is Octavius Cato. He was of the 18th century. He was educated. He wasn't born here, but he migrated here and he was a free man and he was a philanthropist and an abolitionist. Unfortunately, he was gunned down in South Philly, so he, he died prematurely. These are sterling silver um, cufflings um, that I also have, um, that I have in the African American Museum and, and also you can order online. Um, these are in sterling silver uh, or any other metal that you might choose. So he's a very regal, um, you know, strong character um, from representing Philadelphia. Next slide. Absalom Jones was a slave. Uh, he was an um, 18th century um, abolitionist and he was, he was noted for starting the first African American um, Episcopalian church. Uh, he and Richard Allen, who was another minister, were in the same church um, that was an African church um, that kind of like didn't like the way the 
whites were actually part of the congregation and they were separating and segregating. So Richard Allen and Absalom Jones separated and they each started their own arm of a church. So this is Absalom Jones, he's from Philadelphia. And um, this is a sterling silver, or this is a brass necklace uh, with a little bit of a sterling silver with a veil. Next slide. Um, and I was speaking about Richard Allen. So Mother Bethel Church, which is right there on Sixth and Pine, was a founding church that Richard Allen um, uh, founded. And uh, we're paying homage to him with a pair of sterling silver um, cufflings. And as you can see, the olive branch around everything that I do, I like to have the olive branch because it speaks to Kumbaya. Next slide. This, uh, these are brass um, cufflings. Um, actually, 14 karat gold cufflings of Absalom Jones. Next slide. Um, so I mentioned that we have jewelry and we have apparel. So I pay homage to um, uh, Frederick Douglass, Harriet Tubman, Chief Sitting Bull, and a number, and, and politicians during the Re Reconstruction era. So all of these items can be purchased on my website. Um, you'll see the little girl in the lower left. That was a geometric uh, um, drawing for Miss Harriet Tubman. I was always inspired by um, Picasso and his cubism. So I call this the cubist view of Miss Harriet. And to the right, you'll see, you can barely see it, but there are some pillows. I do upholstery pillows as well, of the various, any, any of the icons. So if you can um, advance the slide, that'd be great. Um, just to know, let you know how, how diverse I have been or I've brought in my portfolio, I do do custom pieces. And I do pieces that just resonate with me. So the bracelet on the left, you know, and the, and the necklace are just something that I was just motivated by to do. So, you know, as an artist, we don't like to do the same thing. Um, but on the right-hand side of the slide, um, I was commissioned to do a, a custom piece for a newlywed couple, and um, that's what this represents. This is brass. He, they could have had it in sterling silver, but they chose to have it in brass. So I do custom jewelry pieces of icons as well, any icon that you can think of. Uh, next slide. So um, I don't have all of the images I would like to work with in terms of my portfolio already created. But when I think about others, I think about uh, Elizabeth Blackwell and Lucretia Mott, who were, um, who were Quakers and abolitionists. And then you have Pio de Jesus, who was the governor of New Mexico before it became part of the country. Um, Ida B. Wells, a lot of um, um, uh, people in the media um, and educators love the fact that she was an abolitionist. She was a fighter of, not abolition so much, but she was still a fighter of civil rights. And then we know Golda Meir, the prime minister of Israel. And we have Leah, and she, you know, she's a woman. Let's just pay uh, homage to her because I don't know if there's been another one since her. Um, so these are things, these are images that I can also incorporate in my portfolio. And Levi Coffin was a very strong abolitionist um, in the South, as well as Adam. Croft. So um, if there, next slide. So that represents my um, presentation. Again, you can go to historicaldream.com. Um, that's where you can also email me or call me. Um, I'm on Instagram, historical dream. I'm on Facebook as well. And I can take any questions you have, but I, um, I'm always challenged by new things. For example, somebody's asked me to do a pillow, an upholstered pillow of an equestrian. And there's the, there was a, a very famous photographer, Nadar Felix of the um, middle of the 1800s. He did, a, he did a photographic session of Salika Lazewski, who was a African Parisian equestrian. So I'm doing a portfolio um, of upholstered products for that. Nina, thank you very much. That was wonderful. Um, Susan, do you have any questions for Nina? Yeah, I have one question. What impelled you to change? I mean, this is so drastic, a change of approach. You know, I, I think I was... What you've done. Thank but you. I have a second question. How are you going to get it to a larger market so um i'll answer the first question in that i i knew that i wanted to do something different other than just corporate work 
Uh, my father was an architect, but he had his own business and businesses go up and down. <laughs> and I decided I didn't want that route. I wanted something more steady. So I, I was always wanting to make sure that I complied with, you know, whatever the trends were. So I, I stifled myself and you know, I was in a box until I got my comfort level. And as you get older, you get more comfortable. So I was motivated by the fact that I always knew that I wanted to do something. I didn't know what it was. And then I took art classes when I was in college and I was like, okay, I'm going through some kind of transition. I've been around the corporate world for over 25 years. I wanted to do something. And I, so I reached back to my father's an artist, my uncle's an artist. I have another cousin who's an artist and it just seemed to be the natural thing to go to. And I was always doing stuff, making stuff, being crafty or drawing. So it was a timing, things happen for a reason. And in terms of your second question, my, my goal really is, is to create um, distribution uh, at, a whole, at a retail level through the horse, wholesale chain in museum gift stores. So if anybody knows how to get me into the American Revolutionary <laughs> gift store, that'd be great. Nina, uh, before uh, Susan, just a couple of questions that I'd like to read to. Who is talking and I can't hear. Uh, well, that's okay. What, uh, it'll be delivered, whatever. Did okay. you make it already? Now, let me check it. Yeah, with you, it's fine. Um, I have a couple of questions from the audience. Um, one of them is... Uh, they might have been but it's okay. Whatever you made, I will take. It'll be delicious. Um, if, can you make... How large are the medallions, Nina? Um, the current ones, I mean, it makes sense to work with the current medallions because the cost of creating different sizes is, you know, is, is something to consider. But they're usually the size of a quarter. Um, or, or maybe it was a Susan B. Anthony dollar, you know, but they're, they're, um, and I also have smaller versions, like three different sizes of Harriet Tubman. So it could be a nickel, a quarter, or a dollar size. That's usually what I do. Another question is, uh, can, um, can you make earrings with posts out of the, um, the uh, I can make out of, uh, out of the cufflings? Yes, I can make earrings out of any image that you've seen. Okay, Susan, we just have about two minutes. Do you have any other questions? I don't have any other particular questions, but I just want to say what a wonderful exposition this has been. And we should all be wearing these pieces of jewelry to show our joining with the whole community. Thank you. And I, ju I just want to remind everybody that uh, you can go to Nina's website and if you haven't written it down, go back to the Cosmopolitan Club website and Nina's um, web address is there. So if you want to order any of her things, you can do it via her website or you can call her, which is also there. And I can give you my website. It's historical dream, singular, historicaldream.com. Or just give me a call at 267-551-1969. Nina, I just want to let you know, Nina, that there were several uh, chats that uh, commended the beauty of your work. Uh, Susan, do you want to now introduce Nancy? Sure. Um, mm -hmm. I'd like to introduce Nancy Hirsch. Mm -hmm. Her contributions are amazing. Uh, she uses wonderful flowing media. She uses combination of different materials and paintings become almost sculptural. This relates to her other interests, which are sculpture and also that you ha have had an amazing life of multi media art. Um, <clears throat> we'd like to know, we'd like for you to show us 
a range of your beautiful work and to tell us about particular artifacts that have influenced you. And especially, you talked about meditation. So that would be interesting to know how that has influenced your art. So now we're going to ask you to show us your art so that we can have a lovely visual review of what you do. Thank you. Thank you, Susan. Thank you for that introduction and to the gallery committee, oh the Cosmopolitan oh Club of Philly. Thank you to all my friends and everyone out there. So um, on this slide, we see a split screen. And on the left, I'm giving you a little zoom in on into a painting called Dusk. And on the right, you see me working in my studio and large, large scale work. And this is just kind of an intro because I, as Susan said, I'm a mixed media artist. That means I use a variety of materials. I work in 2D and 3D. And while some of it is figurative, the rest of it I'm, I've been developing my own visual vocabulary over the years. And so on the painting on the left, just in that small fragment, there's ink that I've rubbed in, there's um, spray paint, stencils, there's graphite, and there's oil paint. So that's just kind of giving you a little fragment into how I work and how I think. So the next slide, please. So this is just a little background. Um, I call this mapping an identity with mixed media because my work is an ongoing narrative. It's a visual collage of stories about love and loss, beauty, grace, and fragility told through images and materials. And a new series can start with an experience that I've had or something I found, or it's just these pieces that um, speak to me in different ways. And then they kind of, they riff off of each other. So this is earlier work. And I'd say um, I did my undergraduate work at Pratt Institute in Brooklyn. And then shortly after I moved to Hawaii and it was really in Hawaii that I started finding my own voice. And funny enough, it started with um, my pet rabbit. I decided to, um, someone suggested I paint him. He was kind of my muse. And that was the first time that I really painted something or some, well, someone I loved. So Lamb was the start of it. His name was Lamb Chop. And from there, um, on the, in the circle in the bottom right corner, you see uh, a neighbor of mine, this little boy, and my pet chicken, Juana. And the brown is actual uh, red dirt. I lived in a town called Waialua, which was right near Waimea, which means red dirt. So again, there's pieces of my life. There's the little boy, there's the chicken, there's this landscape. And um, in some ways, I was also depicting a different part of Hawaii. You know, it wasn't just the palm trees and the beach. It was kind of my interior life of what was going on in the time, at that time. And so from that, if you go diagonal, up to the corner where you see the wood pieces. That was actually part of my thesis show. And there was different things going on in my life at the time. I was renovating a house. There's pieces of wood. Um, as a printmaking major, that was what I got my MFA in. I was doing giant collagraphs, which are relief prints. And I used the plates and the prints to tell a story. The other two pieces, the circle in the middle and the one to the right, as I moved back to the East Coast where I was born and raised. Um, they, one had to do with motherhood and the other had to do with um, uh, breast cancer. So my work is really personal. The one in the middle is just kind of funny because I was doing um, cross sections of wood. And at the time someone gave me a placemat and it melted. And then I ended up cutting up and putting it in with wax. And so you can just see, I just mix and match. And it's like this big soup that I pull things from. Okay, next, please. But a huge part of this narrative is a sense of place. And Susan asked about my meditation practice. And that is helping me find to connection something, to something larger than myself. And I've been really meditating on and off since I've been, I was 16 and regularly for over two years now, every single day. And so that sense of place 
Um, these two pieces are from here in Pan uh, Pennsylvania. I live in Landenburg, which is an hour outside of Center City, Philadelphia. And the one on the left are koi from my backyard, koi pond, which is where I often meditate. And then on the one on the right is White Clay Creek State Park, which is this beautiful state park that goes through Pennsylvania and Delaware. I'm hiking in there almost every day with my dogs. Some of you know my dogs, swimming paintings. There's one of Dini behind me. Uh, Magpie is my little Jack Russell, and she is a wader. She is not a swimmer. But what you can see in both of these is that same expressive line and that fragmented net pattern. And I started using nets um, thinking about what we hold on to, what we collect, and what we let go of. And um, the water is a metaphor for, um, for life energy for me, and I see it as a connecting force. And so seeing these lines in the nets, it's, I'm inviting the viewer into my process, this layering, and that's kind of how I work and how I think. So um, let's go to the next one. So this piece is, um, it's four pieces. Um, this was actually kind of how I envisioned one of the walls being at the Cosmopolitan Club from the show, but I'm fortunate that I could hang it here and try it out. The middle piece is called Nest. And again, you see the, um, my vocabulary, my visual, the nets, the fragmented nets. And I've been collecting nets um, my friend Kathy, who's on this call, has sent me a net from the Cape. My friend Lorette, who's on this call, has sent me um, a net from Vietnam. I've like gone on soccer fields and cut up old nets, hauled them back. I have buckets of nets. And to me, they have this wonderful texture and they also tell a story. And a lot of my work is connected to home and family. So my dad, who's also on this call, um, I had a women's millinery store all through my life growing up. And I just loved the, the ladies' church hats and with the netting and the, so these textures really speak to me in a way that I just pour through into my work. So Nest was thinking about home and family because again, it's really, that's what most of my work is about. And at the time, my sons were getting older. My older son was going off to college and I was thinking about leaving the nest. The piece on the right um, was a first of a series of paintings of, that started the past couple years. Um, my mom was um, getting ready to pass and we spent a lot of time together, which was really a beautiful time in my life. Um, as sad as it was, it was really important to me. And also at the same time, someone gave me a roll of Tyvek this big roll, 16 inches wide. She calls me up, she says, Nancy, I found this roll of Tyvek at this art supply store. It's only $25, you should get it. And I hemmed and hawed and she said, it's only $25, I'm getting it for you. And so that sat for a while. And then I started cutting 16 inches squares because what happened was I started um, thinking about the grief process and the healing process and working through it. So I went back to black and white and I went back to printmaking because printmaking is really about process for me. So I wasn't thinking about what it's gonna look like at the end. I was thinking about where it was gonna take me. And again, that reflects back to daily meditation, reciting uh, daily Kaddish, which is the prayer for the dead. And I thought of art and meditation as a way to connect to my history, to my mom, to, just um, being an artist, which is my centering force, being an artist. And the left, the two on the left started out as a black and white print, like the one on the right, but they started to evolve with some other materials. So let's go to the next one. So for this, I'm gonna ask you guys to just take a look. Some of you know I'm also a teaching artist and that's really important to me. So I would love for you to take a moment and just look at the work and type in the chat something that you notice, whether it's a texture, a shape, a feeling, emotion, anything. And then um, maybe we'll share them if we have time. But I'd love to see how you respond to this piece. So I'm gonna look for a minute, okay?
we do okay. have thank several you. comments. Yes, we'll I can see them. Later. Thank you. Yep, thank you. And I, I'm noticing um, that there's different ways of looking at it from feeling to actually seeing images in there, which just, you know, probably were not intentional. So it's kind of fun when they show up. So thank you. Um, this piece is called Life Force. And it started as, as a monotype, a black and white monotype that I mounted onto cradled board. And there are layers of encaustic, which is pigmented hot wax that you fuse with a heat gun. Um, some textures, some, I had, when we moved into this house, there was these curtains with little mirrors and the, those curtains end up in my work a lot and copper leafing. So again, it's my connection to an experience, but also to the materials that we see. Um, next, please. So here is a view of my studio downstairs. Um, and these, after the squares, they needed to expand. And so I started cutting eight foot pieces. So they're still the 16 inches wide, eight foot pieces. And I would print, draw, keep working back into it. And I really see that these are somatic, like they are of my body. They, they're the scale of a body and they're just kind of, to me, they're like waterfalls of the process of creating, of thinking about what is tangible, what is intangible, what is physical, what is non-physical. You know, my spiritual practice, I believe that we are all vibrations. You know, I have been reading about metaphysics and physics and as energy, how can I make that tangible for us to experience in a different way? So you can see my studio. Um, I, to the far right on the, is the, the tray of my etching press and um, the hanging sculptures. There's actually two there, one's overlaid, but there are these nets. And I just kind of wanted to show you guys, I don't know if you can see this. So these are a wire that I, I shape these into, this, I shape this into a utensil, a giant fork, but they're dil dipped into pulp, overly beaten abaca pulp, and then it dries like a skin, and then they're coated with wax. So this also has um, rods in there and an old typewriter key that I found. So again, it's the work having a conversation and the, dr the nets that are hanging inspired the large prints and the prints, it goes back and forth. So I see this as an ongoing conversation and an ex exploration of our human experience. Okay, next. So this, this is just uh, a little bit better view of for the large prints. Again, they're eight feet tall. Um, the earlier ones were pretty much just black and white. And then as I started moving through the process, color started coming in. Um, there's a lot of collage in there. And the one on the right is a monotype that again, mounted on cradled board. But before I mounted it, I started weaving paper through it. So I saw in the chat, um, Linda said threads. Threads are a big part of my work as well. I'm really, I really see us as all connected and I'm always looking for those threads. You know, how are we connected to each other? How are we connected to nature, a higher power? So again, there's some of those repetitive um, textures and shapes that I use. And the next one. So this is that wall again that I got to rehang and following the, um, the black and white prints, I started moving into color again. So I still love that square format, but they're expanded. These are 36 inches and then with the frame, they're 38 by 38. And I was pulling back a little bit, trying to leave some more open space in the work. I think I was feeling more open. And I get these amazing sunsets here in Landerberg. The sun sets in the west and it shoots this orange pink light across my backyard. And my downstairs studio, I see that as well. So I was kind of setting up a landscape, you know, again, that sense of place, um, referencing home and thinking about something larger than self. The one in the middle <laughs> started out very simple like that and it really just started to become layered and i'm really interested in that layering sometimes you know it's good to pull everything off and then sometimes 
thinking about how things aren't simple because a lot of this is also reflecting the outside world. You know, the, in our interior lives, we are also affected by what's going outside. And so I'm thinking about how to transcend that and then how to honor, honor that. So um, this is, you know, I put up my social media and my website. I would love to connect to people. I love sharing my work. Um, I love seeing friends in the chat. Uh, and then also what I did is I uploaded on my website under events, a, PD, uh, a link to a PDF. So if you wanted to go through any of the work, look at it more slowly, you know, and then ask me about it at some time or share with me your thoughts. I'm really always interested in, in having a conversation because that's really the fun part for me. It's, you know, in our studio, uh, it, you work in a silo. And to me, it's having that conversation afterwards that I really love. So that's my slides. And if there's any questions or anything. Susan, do you have any questions? I have a couple of questions. First, in the one of your first slides, you showed a lot of rabbits. Can you tell us how the rabbits relate to your art? Sure. <laughs> um, I was living in Hawaii and I had a surfing rabbit as a pet. And um, someone said, you should paint your rabbit. And I really thought it. And then I painted it. And um, it just really brought me joy. So my animals are my muses as well. You know, I don't really paint my family. I don't really do portraits of my kids or my husband or anything like that. It's, but I talk about them in a roundabout way, but animals for me are really a wonderful way to talk about love and unconditional love. So that's what the dogs are, the rabbits and the koi fish. Okay, and the other thing is, do you have any particular artist who inspires you? Because you have such a wonderful range of art. I do, thanks. I do. So I've always loved the work of um, Kiki Smith and Louise Bourgeois. For both of them, that their work references the body. Uh, their work is a lot about process as well. There's a very feminine um, perspective from their work. And then on a kind of different spectrum, I love the paintings of um, the abstract expressionist Joan Mitchell and more recently Susan Rothenberg. Their work is, again, very expressive. Like, it feels like the work is um, pouring out of their body. And that's, I've never said that, but I think that's, for me, what happens. The work just kind of comes out of my body. And I see these artists as doing the same thing. Louise and Kiki, it's a little bit more of a narrative, but um, it's like the work is ex an extension of who they are. And the other thing, you, you speak about meditation being very important to you. How does that relate to your artwork? Meditation is a way for me to be present and find that, that higher vibration, that synchronicity in my life. So I think you can tell from my work that I'm a high energy person. And sometimes it's just like, and meditation is a way to bring me back in and stay centered and really above the fray. Because a lot, quite a bit of this work does deal with um, joy, but it also deals with trauma, whether it was to my body, to what's going on in the world. And meditation helps me step back from it. And then I can then process everything through my work. Um, Susan, before you take the next question, can I read some of the comments that came in for Nancy? Uh, th these uh, first ones are in your request about uh, what you see in that painting. And one, one, someone said, love the texture and color, stunning. And from Stephanie, she sees fire uh, in that uh, painting that you asked us to uh, give you input. 
And for me, I saw a little, little mouse in the lower right hand corner. Um, let's see. Um, and from Lorette, we have the comment flow, F L O W. And from Catherine, tangled. You asked, you know, what we saw. And from Vanessa, uh, a standing man. And from Linda, we have threads. And from Vanessa, again, we have and your nets. Um, and from Barbara, we have like a cocoon. And, um, and from Kathy, we have I'm drawn into the piece through the movement of the nets. And from Maxine, we have a boot. And from Susan Legro, we have footsteps forward, um, turbulence from Beverly, and pyramid riding, pyramid and writhing mist. Mm. Uh, and then from Mickey, we have I see a boot travel moving forward out of the cave. Um, and from Lorette, connections. From Julie, I see the planet Earth in the lower left. Aloha, Nancy. Uh, from Kathy, without knowing the title, I saw the orange areas as life force. And from Catherine again, love the muted colors coming through. And from Ma Marion, I'm extremely so sorry. Whoop, sorry. Uh, from Vanessa. I love how you work through the grief, through your work. The waterfalls are fantastic. Love how they spill over. And from Kathy, I love your work because it's so expressive. The deep feelings come through and connect us to your life and experience. And then from Beverly, I love the sunset, sunset colors of the rightmost piece. Now, um, since we do have a couple more minutes, Susan, do you have any other uh, questions you'd like to pose? I don't have any other questions. All right. I'm uh, very happy to turn it over to the other people who may have questions. Okay. Does anyone have any other uh, questions or comments that they'd like to give to Nancy at this point? If you do, just unmute yourself and uh, go ahead. Okay. Well, I will conclude by saying that this has been an amazing show. Wonderful and so great that the Cosmopolitan Club has been able to show it to all the members. I think we all owe a huge hurrah to you and Shira for making this possible. Thank you. Uh, again, if anyone has any comments that they'd like to make, um, I, I would like to. I I'd like to make a comment. Um, Shall we? Done so many meet the artists in the building um, that have been interesting, but I have never seen um, a meet the artists where we had so much participation and 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 so much um, comments and expression of passion about what the artists, um, Nancy uh, and the other artists, I'm sorry. Nina. Um, yeah. Nina, um, what, they, what they are want to share with us. And this is just a very special event. It's our first virtual Meet the Artist event. And I want to thank the gallery committee for their hard work in putting this together and the two artists for sharing their 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 lives with us, truly their passion and 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 their creativity with us, it's just been a beautiful experience. So thank, thank you. Thank you, thank, thank you, you. Shelley. And I want to remind. Add? Sure. So um, I also want to thank the artists and uh, the committee for uh, a very inspiring hour. I, I have found this to be, a, thank you very much. The, the artists have been extremely uh, inspiring to me and uh, educational. And, uh, and, I, and I really wanna thank everyone who has worked very hard to make this happen. 
Uh, I would like to add my thanks and uh, also, and I want to remind all of you that you can still go to the Cosmopolitan website and under the gallery uh, banner, you can go to current exhibit. And then if you want to know what's coming up, you can look at coming up next exhibit, which will be on um, October 8th, I believe. Uh, but watch your uh, Cosmopolitan Connections. Go into our website. We plan to have uh, another, um, we plan to have one show each month with two artists and we're all the way up to February at this point. So again, thank you all very much and um, good night. Thank you, everyone. This was really, this was a fun opportunity and see just go shows things turn out well one way or another, right? Well, so you know what they say, bad, bad dress rehearsal, great start. <laughs> I just even meant, you know, March with the whole pandemic, right? You know, first it was like, oh, maybe we won't be able to open it. Oh, maybe we'll make it later. So this was really fun and it was great being able to take everyone along and meeting Nina and meeting the gallery community. I get to meet you all. So thanks everybody. Thank, Thank you. you for coming. Thank you. And, and please tell your friends and family uh, to attend our next show Absolutely. in October. Absolutely. Thank you all. Thank you very much. It's so great to see how your work has changed over the years, and it's great to see. I don't know if you recognize me. I Amy, do, Amy. Of course, I from do. Of course, I do. Yeah, it's refreshing to see your work. Thanks, sweetie. I'm so glad you came, and thank you, everybody else. Nancy Glick and Skylar and Julie and all my buddies, Kathy and Kathy and. Vanessa, <laughs> Dad. All right, guys. Thanks. Have All a right. good night. Good night. Bye-bye. Good night. Bye -bye. Good night.